And, you know, over the weekend on Friday on our show, they announced the, the signing of Odell Beckham Jr. Finally to the Dolphins. And that was cool that they signed him. And we told you that he was still in play uh, because they had signed slots. And he's really not a slot guy. He's really an outside guy. And that's probably how they're going to use him most of the time. Can I see him sometimes in the slot, maybe in motion, things like that? Sure, I can see that with him. But I more often than not, he's going to be on the outside and Waddle will come inside or maybe even Tyreek sometimes will come inside, use him in motion and those kind of things. So that could happen, but I think Waddle a lot. So what they did was, as I told you, they attacked the slot position by bringing back Berrios, adding Craycraft, who's a complete receiver, and then they went and drafted two and brought two others. And they so they are going to solve their slot problem one way or another, right? And then they added depth on the outside just in case any of the guys are slowed down by injury. So he'll be able to share time and and you won't be you won't have to burn Odell Beckham Jr. out or anything like that because he's also not a durable player. You've added John U. Smith. And so you start to take inventory. And I got to tell you something. I could not be more excited about the Dolphins because I think Austin Jackson has settled in at right tackle. I know that if Armstead plays, he'll be great. And now you've got his backup who did an exceptional job in Kendall Lamb. So I feel great about that. Um, Keon has made, you know, progress also. And then you drafted the future in Patrick. But then I start to look at the weapons. And I I just told you about the slot receivers. You brought Barrios. You brought Craig Kraft. You got the Washington boys. You added two other, um, you know, slot guys. Then you added a tight end in John U. Smith. Um, the Jody Fortson kid is also kind of a receiver, a tight end converted from receiver. Uh, Hill, Julian Hill started to kind of show you a little something towards the end. And then, you know, Smythe is a possession guy. So you start to look at the middle and there's a lot to work with already. And then you go to the outsides, the aforementioned Tyreek, Waddle, and Odell Beckham. Then coming out of the backfield, you've got Mostert, Achan, and Wright. That's going to be your pecking order. Those are your three guys. You're going to rotate to keep the offense fresh. And by the way, there's a fullback named Malik Ingold who not only blocks, but he can also catch the ball. And with all the attention being paid to everybody else, Ingold can actually catch some footballs and nobody's going to be paying attention to him. So he might have some wide open looks and easy four, six, seven, ten yard receptions and help move the chains. When I start to look at what you have already and what you've amassed and the fact that all most of your linemen coming back have been in the system and they will get to even better now because they're all in the system. Your quarterback is better because it's his third year in the system. Receivers, most of them are better because they've been in the system now for a couple of years. So there isn't this huge learning curve for a ton of players. It's only for a few. And those few now have experienced people to guide them through it. Something you didn't have two years ago because everybody was going through it. Except for Craycraft or Ahmed or people that came from the San Francisco system that they brought in. Those were the only ones that weren't necessarily making this huge transition because they kind of understood it. Now you've got all of this in there. And as Armstead said to Rich Eisen that the light went on for him in the second year because it started to click and understand everything about the offense because it's not an easy offense to learn. So a lot of these guys are going into their second and third years of this. So this is all positive. And when I start to think about it, it's not so much about Odell. It's about the variety of weapons that the Miami Dolphins now have and all the different things that they can do. And they have a backup plan for a backup plan now, right? They've got Mostert and now they had a Chan and now they've got Wright. 
And now they've got Berrios and they've got Craycraft. And then is it the Washington brothers or is it somebody else? You know, and then they've got Hill and then they've got Waddle and then they've got OBJ. And then they got John Smith. And now they've got Hill, Fortson, and Smythe. And I don't know if Tanner Connor will ever do anything, but they've got a lot of depth in all kinds of areas where they really did not have that kind of depth early on. Now they've got depth. A lot of it is experienced. So that's really going to help out in a big time way. I could not be more excited about this offense. Seriously, Brewer, I think, fits exactly what they want. Eichenberg will be healthy. I think he's going to be a much better player overall. I, I really like where the direction that this offense is going in. The defense, okay, a defensive tackle, you got you to gotta find out what you've got there and if you can, you know, mask the loss of Wilkins because you're not necessarily going to ask these young guys and these other guys to be replacing him. It would be nice. If the Tart kid comes in and all of a sudden does mostly what Wilkins did, that would be fantastic, but it's not fair to them. But on offense, I have every every um, uh, every uh, what's it called weapon, stat, fact, and player that I think gives me the kind of depth that I feel these guys can have a lot of success. Because McDaniel will be able to run what he does consistently because so many people have the same skill sets to continue to rotate in and out. So if Malik Washington is pretty good, then he's going to give Berrios and Craycraft a run for their money. And all of a sudden, we've got a rotation. And if Wright is pretty damn good, then he's going to give Mostert and Achan a run for their money. And you're going to have a lot of depth. You understand what I'm saying? And if OBJ is healthy, then he should be fine complimenting Hill and Waddle. I really love the direction that the Miami Dolphins offense is going in. I, I, I think it's going to be the best offense they've had this year because it's going to be the most balanced offense this year. There's been too much of an imbalance. I don't believe Tyreek will have the same kind of yards. I don't think you'll have the same kind of catches. I already told you about that last week. And the the proof is there. You're not adding a tight end to not throw it to him. You're not you're not drafting another running back in the third round not to use him as a runner and as a wide receiver. You're not bringing OBJ here so he doesn't catch passes. You're bringing all of this because you're going to spread the ball more than you ever have. And you probably sat down and said this over dependence of Tyreek Hill has to end. Plus, we're wearing him out. Plus, he won't be here in 2025. We need to start preparing for life without Tyreek. We need to start being less dependent and more team dependent. And that's what I'm I'm seeing right there on that roster and the way they're building things. And if Tyreek doesn't see it, the writing is on the wall. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. <laughs>